So you've just picked up your S22, S22 Plus, or S22 Ultra. Here are the first six things or six tweaks that I would make out of the box to my S22 phone. Now, first up, it's gonna be going into the display settings. So let's go into settings, display, and you wanna check these settings. We're gonna enable adaptive brightness, the motion smoothness, make sure that's set to adaptive, screen mode, vivid, edge panels enabled if you wanna add some of those edge panels there and configure that in a moment if you like. Navigation bar, we're actually gonna set that to swipe gestures because that gives us back space at the bottom of the screen rather than permanently having buttons down there. And if you have the S22 Ultra, you want to go into the screen resolution and switch that over to WQHD Plus to get the best resolution possible. Just be aware that you do trade this off with battery life. So if you really want more battery out of this thing, then consider going down to Full HD Plus. But I wouldn't really recommend HD as it really does get a bit blurry with that selectors. Over to the camera settings now. Make sure it's on photo, then tap settings, and then turn on tracking autofocus, which just helps you keep someone in focus if they're moving. If you also want the highest quality photos in raw format so you can edit them later in something like Adobe Lightroom then go into picture formats and enable raw in there and it also enable the location tags as depending on what you're using to display your photos that can actually help you display them on a map and you can also enable grid lines here too if you want to have those to show up, up there too then go back to the camera and flip it to video then back into the settings and again enable tracking autofocus now we also want you to disable auto FPS because this setting basically reduces the frame rate which can give you like juddery video in low light as it tries to boost up the brightness instead. Head back to the camera and now tap more. If you look through the list of modes, if there are any ones you just want to use more often, they can literally just drag these down to the bottom. Like portrait mode video is one that I'd use more often and perhaps food is one for you if for those kind of foodie bloggers out there. Number three is your lock screen. Into settings and lock screen. Enable the always on display if that's not really enabled. And if you tap into that, I'd also change it to show always. Otherwise it's not really an always on display and kind of misses the point, but hey ho. You can also enable and disable showing music information. Also down, go down to widgets and you can enable and disable widgets there. Not something I'd personally use, but maybe they'll be helpful to you. Also, whilst you're here, head down to shortcuts. I like to mirror what I used to have on my iPhone, which is torch and the camera, but I guess you could swap out maybe the camera one for something else. Number four, head to home screen. And this is something that drives me absolutely nuts. I want to use home screen and apps because it's clean. It takes away all my apps away and I then swipe up to get to my app drawer. However, what I normally do is ignore all of that and I'd rather swipe up and then search for what I want to use. But you can only do that when you change this to home screen only. See how I can now swipe up and search? So I would personally have a play with this to find out which way works best for you because what happens is that when switching between these two views, it totally changes the home screen layout. So you could spend all the time in the world customizing your home screen in that home screen only mode and then you lose it all and have to start from scratch again when you switch it to like the homes and apps screen mode. Number five is the advanced features now. And as you scroll down here, let's first go into side key. Now here you can change the double key press to whatever you want and also press and hold. I hate Bixby and I wish they had a way to change this to a different voice assistant, but at least you can change it to the power off menu instead. If you have small hands, then you can enable one handed mode so you can easily get to the top of the screen without having to adjust your own grip. And right down at the bottom, a feature I came across recently is video brightness. Now set that to bright as it really does help make that video content look so much better better on the S22, the Plus and the Ultra. Really punchy, particularly the HDR content just looks stunning. Number six is the quick settings area, which is the top section. So swipe down, swipe down again, and now tap on the three dots in the corner, then edit buttons. What you can do now is drag all of the things that you actually do use often down into the lower section, which is what will kind of show in the top bar. So most of us probably don't use airplane mode daily. So move these around to suit whatever your use is. For me, that's things like the wireless, Bluetooth, mute or do not disturb, mobile hotspots, torch, screen recorder, and maybe extra dim. And if you go into the quick panel layout at the top, you can also change the brightness to show always, which saves you having to swipe down twice to get into the brightness control. And that is basically everything I do with my S22 out of the box. Now, let me know down in the comments below if there's anything you do differently or something I have maybe missed. Subscribe to the channel. And if you wanna hear my thoughts on the S22 Ultra or the Plus, you can check out my full reviews here. Cheers.